Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As, as always, before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 23rd regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Falk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clionis? Here. Manny? Excuse. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Here. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. Fourteen present. Quorum is present. At this time, it's time to pledge allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. Alderman Ryan, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Before we proceed with the approval of the minutes, I'd just like to remind the Alderman to please make sure that your mic is on close to you around this area here, not on your hand, because when you turn, we lose contact, and we have had some, uh, some viewers uh, uh, concerned that they're not able to hear clearly, so please put it on as, uh, as well as you can. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. Alderman Heidemann, did you wish to say? Your lights are beeping. Is it? Oh. Sorry. Okay. All right, we're off. Oh, it's still beeping. There we go, we are off. We're off. I take it you don't want to engage in discussion. <laughs> any, any discussion? There will be an aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Uh, there's a memo uh, from me, Sekio, advising that uh, she's resigning from the Mayor's International Committee. She's working in Green Bay and uh, isn't able to make the, uh, make the meetings. Any motion to accept and file? Second. Motion to second to accept and file. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And there's a letter to the mayor from uh, Richard Meyer, the uh, manager of the Business Improvement District, advising that Mary Morandi has resigned from the Business Improvement District Board. And we need a motion to file that letter too? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Is it? As far as appointments, uh, they have Today, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Bill Grinke to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Mary Morandi, whose term expires 9-10-2010, signed by the mayor. This will lie over. What I will do is ask my secretary to email you a little bit of bio about this individual. This individual is being uh, submitted for appointment by me on the recommendation of Mr. Uh, Dick Myers from the Bid District. And that lies over. Thank you very much, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation for Mr. Lucio Fuentes. At this time, I'd ask uh, Mr. Fuentes to step over. Is there anyone that doesn't know Lucio? Raise your hand. <laughs> I think everyone knows Lucio. I've known Lucio since May 1st, 1984. Uh, Lucio and I go back a long way. I, I even worked for him when I first came to Sheboygan. Uh, we've had our ups and downs, uh, both as friends, both as colleagues, uh, business partners, and so forth. We've done just about as much as anybody can do in a lifetime together. And as I said, had our ups and downs, but we've made that full circle to where we can uh, respect each other and respect each other's opinions and differences, which is what I see here in, in the Common Council current lately, and that, uh, that is very appreciated. 
As I said, Lucio has been around the community for a long time. He has done an incredible amount of good to the community, both as a director of uh, partners, which used to be Comunidad de Amigos uh, at, uh, in 1984 when he first started. Uh, Lucio is probably one of the ones that will continue to be around after all of those are gone. He, when I first came here in 1984, he talked about retiring. He hasn't yet, so he's, he's not going to. This proclamation is, can I get my glasses? I forgot my glasses. <laughs> this proclamation is, is long overdue and it's very well deserved. Whereas on March 1st, 1975, Lucio Fuentes began his public service career as director of programs for Comunidad de Amigos, and whereas Lucio Fuentes has devoted himself as a servant to the citizens of Sheboygan area for the past 33 years, and whereas Lucio Fuentes has provided leadership by being the founder and director of Partners for Community Development Incorporated, the founder and treasurer of the Amigo Scholarship Foundation, and the founder and president of Superior Minority Enterprises, serving as a role model, and whereas Lucio Fuentes established and built the new headquarters for Partners for Community Development in 2001, and whereas Lucio Fuentes was the developer of Partners Meadowview Townhouses at Farm Labor Housing Development in Hartford, Wisconsin, as well as developer of Partners Sunnyside Townhouses, a tax credit affordable housing development in the city of Sheboygan, and whereas Lucio Fuentes continues his community services by also serving on the Sheboygan Civil Service Commission, and as you heard last time, he served under four or three or four mayors, which is a long time, the Wells Fargo Community Board, the Sheboygan Chamber of Commerce, St. Clement Church Endowment Advisory Council and Church Choir, Sheboygan Contractors Association and the National Weatherization Operators of Wisconsin Association, <coughs> and whereas Lucio Fuentes serves as a role model of a true public servant and community leader. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, by the virtue and authority vested in me as mayor, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations by declaring March 3rd, Monday, March 3rd, 2008, is Lucio Fuentes Day. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this thing on? I think so, right? Um, yeah, it's very nice to be recognized, especially when you're recognized for, for something you do and when you love what you do so much. I always tell my wife that I'm like those uh, senators and congressmen that uh, I think I'm going to work until I'm 90, you know, <laughs> uh, never leave the job. Uh, of course, you know, uh, you, you have to keep your health and, and, and keep uh, that desire in front of you. But I'm a simple man, you know. I, I, I don't change a lot. Uh, find something I like and I, and I stick to it. I was telling a friend the other day that I've been living in the same house for 27 years. And I've been working for the company for 35 years. And I've been married to one, the same woman for 44 years. He said, oh, my God, you've been married for 44 years? Did she ever think about divorce? Say no. She's, she thought about murder a couple of times, but I, <laughs> yeah. When I first came to Sheboygan, you know, I was really impressed with the city and uh, the German Dutch culture has treated minorities very well, and I think that's why many minorities have succeeded and like Sheboygan. Uh, I remember when I first uh, came to this area, my parents were migrant workers, so my my family bought a, uh, a home in Cedar Grove, and I used to live in Chicago, so I came to visit. And she told me, well, here in Cedar Grove, the Hollanders, they don't do anything on Sundays. You know, they, you can't wash the car, you can't mow the lawn. Said, I like that. I like these people. I think I'd like to move over here. And uh, I get very nervous. That's why I'm not a politician, because I hate speaking in public. <laughs> but... Uh, I think that, you know, the, having all these different cultures is uh, an advantage, not a disadvantage. You know, we learn from each other. We become stronger and wiser. I think the fate of the world lies on the hands of the United States. You know, as we get into these world markets and we have to understand other cultures and other languages, what we practice here with the people that we know because we have a lot of, a lot of different 
uh, ethnicities in the United States. And um, my mouth is getting dry again. Uh, that is one of the, uh, the greatest benefits of not only learning somebody's uh, culture and language, but also understanding their differences and being able to uh, work with them. I accept this award, this pro proclamation. I, I thank you all. I just wanted to, to let those committee members that I told you that uh, if you voted for me, I was going to buy you a car. I was only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Public forum, Madam City Clerk? Uh, there would be no one. No one on the public forum? Right. Next item on the agenda is Mayor's comments. I wanted just to briefly touch on some snow issues and concerns. Uh, I wonder why. Uh, again, as everyone knows, we've had one of the most bitter winters, uh, very unfriendly and very demanding winters, a lot of snow, snow, melt, freezing ice, snow, melt, freezing ice, slippery conditions, a lot of buildup, very little salt, you finally get the salt, a lot of overtime, people working ungodly hours just to keep our streets clean. I wanted to make a point to the public in particular that we're aware of the situation as it stands right now in Sheboygan and probably all over the state of Wisconsin and other neighboring areas. Mother Nature has not been very, very friendly with us this year. We, we, we are aware of the situation and we are trying to deal with it in the best way that we can with the resources that we have available. I wanted to, to assure the, the public and the aldermen of one thing that I keep hearing when I get calls, and I get calls, I could say literally every day, lots of them, is that we're not out there trying to clean the streets and asking people to move their cars because we want to give tickets in order to make money to pay for our city bills. What is being collected uh, from the tickets is nowhere near what's going to be needed to cover our over budget and cleaning uh, and overtime this year. Nowhere near. So for the city to even think that we're going to go out there and collect and, and issue citations so we can collect money so we can pay, it's not the case. The reason police are, are issuing citations, and rightfully so, uh, it's their job to enforce the law, that is because people still are not moving their cars. Everyone that's called me about a ticket got one because they didn't move their car. There's no other reason for issuing citations. I would have preferred that warnings would have been given out when my emergency proclamation was issued. The, the, the intent was, or, or the motivation was public safety and excess, not enforcement. It quickly became enforcement and a barrage of uh, citations were issued. Rightfully so, because people weren't moving their cars. But that's where it took a turn, and I think um, perhaps some of the public out there uh, misunderstand what exactly we're trying to do and what we're trying to, to accomplish. The other thing I briefly wanted to touch on is it's not over, folks. When this snow melts, we got potholes, lots of them. I went out there driving for about an hour. I think everywhere I went, I hit two or three in the same block. I couldn't believe how many potholes there were today. It's just, there's just a lot of them. Uh, people don't like them. Uh, I asked the public to cooperate, drive a little slower, a little bit more carefully. Don't try to swerve them. Swerve the, the pothole because what's just going to happen, you're going to hit another car coming around or someone parked. It's bad. We know it's bad. We're not ignoring the situation, just like we're not ignoring the snow situation. The potholes are out there. There was an instance when we started taking care of the potholes because people were complaining about the potholes. When we did that, then people were calling complaining about the blacktop because it was sticking to their cars and it wasn't adhering to it. So it, it's very hard to balance the need to cover it and, and, and what people are perceive as, as the work that's being done. The key point I'm trying to make is we're aware of the situation. We know what's going on out there. We're doing the best we can. 
and I, I commend Bill Bidner and his Public Works crew for, for the job they're, they're doing. It's a job most of us don't get to see uh, because, for the most part, a lot of us are asleep when they're out there. And a lot of us are in our offices, uh, nice and warm, when they're out there patching holes or taking care of uh, drains and drainage and so forth. So just so, just so people, people know. The other thing that I want to just quickly point out is I want to thank the people who have called with an enormous amount of ideas and suggestions on how to provide a better service. Some of them actually sound pretty good. And what I've decided to do is sometime when all the dust settles down, is to have a, at least one public input session and invite the people to come in and, and discuss those suggestions with Public Works, myself, and any alderman who wishes to be present, so that we can have a dialogue. Uh, a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, but it's possible for one, some of us to miss something, to miss a point. And I think what the uh, public is trying to say is, listen, I'm out here in the streets. I'm, I'm out here living here. I'm driving around. You're missing this. And that may be what we need to hear. I'm not saying that everything that they bring to us as input is going to be quickly uh, and immediately implemented, but at least it'll provide us with a forum for the dialogue so we can get some ideas and get, get each other talking and understanding what's going on. Final point, Public Works is working extremely hard on godly hours. They're really doing their job, and I commend them. If you were to call at 3 o'clock, though, I don't know who's going to answer. <laughs> Thank you. Next item on the agenda, President Hanna, consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion to second, 23-1 to 23-26, under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'd just like to mention document number 2320 um, and to the aldermen, if I could. Please just do. let them know, thank you, uh, that uh, our wellness awareness letter has gone out to all our employees. Our wellness committee is alive and meeting on a regular basis, and we're making wonderful progress, I'm happy to report. Um, just to let you know also, we're having an employee appreciation day on Friday, March 7th. Uh, and we're really excited about that as well. Uh, there's also the first copy of the HR newsletter uh, giving you some information as to what's happening as well. I'm open to all your suggestions and I welcome your support and even your participation in our, in our project. Um, we're going to do everything we can to keep you informed on a regular basis as to what's going on. So thanks from the Wellness Committee. Alderman uh, Kittleson. Uh, presented, uh, and Lieutenant Williams presented to the staff meeting this morning uh, a presentation on, on this particular matter, and I would just like to commend Alderman Kittleson and Lieutenant Williams for the excellent job that they're doing. Um, quite frankly, I think uh, the, the, the two perfect people were picked for the job, so keep up the good work. Thank you. Alderman, play us. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I also enjoyed this newsletter. That was funny. Um, great, and thanks, uh, Alderman Kisha for the hundred dollars. Thanks for helping that out. Uh, the other thing, I, I just wanted to ask a question of salary and grievances in regard to 23-24. The, appoint, the appointment of school crossing guards. Um, how was it done before? This was a change. I just was wondering how was it done before that this change needed to be done? Did Alderman Kittleson, I mean Alderman Payunas, uh, did, did you want to speak, Alderman Hanna? I will, but before okay. you start off. Okay. Alderman Montemayor, No, no, if you have the explanation, that's perfectly wonderful. Okay. Well, the explanation is that the way it was being done before is I believe the traffic sergeant would, uh, would interview the people and make a selection from a, uh, a list of candidates that had indicated an interest or applied. Um, and, and that's okay. That was, that was perfectly, or perfectly all right. What happens is there was in the city code a section there that said that all crossing guards needed to be uh, picked out from a list of, of qualified applicants uh, that were provided by the Civil Service Commission. Uh, why it's there, I don't know. It's been there for a lot of years. So the code needed to be in, either enforced or it needed to be changed. In this case, the committee decided to change it. it there's really not a, a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of need to have uh, the crossing guards go before the Civil Service Commission, just like a lot of other uh, city employees do not go before the Civil Service Commission. President Hanna? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think that the new process will keep the kids safe, the citizens will be safe, there will be appropriate interviews by the Human Resources Director. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a much more flexible and streamlined process to keep the crossing guards at their stations. Right. Thank you, President Hanna. Paul Mangisha? Just a quick note that it also include background checks yes. on all of them. Uh, that was brought up at the meeting as well. Yeah. Yeah. Vice President Board? That's what I was going to say. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so we're on um, 23-1 through 23-26. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Kleinus, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. President Hanna. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull forward uh, 2235 under matters lied over. Thank you. Would you like to make a motion to put it? Yes, I would like to make a motion uh, the, to place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2235 on page 9 upon its passage. Any discussion? There will be a none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Report of committees 2, 2327 by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending adopting the City of Sheboygan Comprehensive Park Recreation and Open Space Plan. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would also like to pull forward 2328 and 2356. Okay, and those are duplicates. And I would like to make a motion to accept and file all our O's and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I would like to open the floor up to Chad Polachek and Ann Freiwald. This has been a long time coming, this plan, and um, if anybody has any questions, uh, Mr. Polachek will introduce Ann Freiwald. Is that a motion to open the floor? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please uh, come up to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, older persons. Um, this has been a planning process that's been underway for, like Alderman Meyer said, for a while, uh, prior to me coming on board with the city. Um, and it was a joint effort between the planning department and the pup, par, parks and forestry and public works. And we've got to a, come to a plan um, that's in front of you. I, I, you've seen it. Uh, and Freewald is which Shrive Brandersons, the, the city, obtained them to do uh, the help with, assist with the plan. And I'm going to turn it over to her, but I wanted to just mention that the people that are from the city in the back all have been involved with this, Bill Bulky, Bill Bittner, Paul Meyer, and Paulette Enders. So if there is any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Ann with Tri Branderson. Good evening. I know you have a very long agenda, so I'll keep my presentation very short. The, um, the advantages of having a, uh, a five-year park and recreation and open space plan are, are many. Uh, one thing it allowed us to do is to um, work with the, st the staff from various departments and also from the public and some of the stakeholder groups in your park system. And Steve, who provides the recreation from the school district, and kind of take a long look on the horizon in the next five years and what kind of issues this, the city of, of Sheboygan's uh, park and uh, recreation departments might be facing. It also allows you to, uh, to put uh, an updated um, report on file with the DNR, which will allow you to be eligible for grants for the next five years. So that's a plus for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, the planning process uh, included working with the staff from various departments, as I mentioned, talking to the public and meeting with various committees and researching the plans of the county and other agencies that affect the provision of parks and open space in, in the city of Sheboygan. This plan emphasizes uh, the enhancement and uh, expansion of your existing parks and parks facilities, preservation and improved access to your rivers and your beautiful lakefront and shoreline, 
of Sheboygan, uh, President, Preservation and Development of Natural Corridors and Parkways, which is something you've been working on for a long time, and continued development of the city's system of trails and, and sidewalks to connect natural areas and recreational opportunities. I've, I've done a lot of these plans. I've been in the business um, since, uh, well, for about 20 years. And um, you guys have a very beautiful park system here, and you have the beautiful advantage of having the river, a couple of rivers and the lakefront. So, and you've taken a nice advantage of it. Um, I think some of the things that you might be facing coming down the pike over the next five years, um, we'll be working on various bicycles and pedestrian facilities to make your city more friendly for alternative transportation. Uh, developing the Sheboygan, uh, Sheboygan American with Disabilities Transition Plan to catch up with the ADA. Um, continue to re replace outdated equipment, which is something you were working on uh, prior to the plan, and I think you have some a ways to go with that, but you've been making nice progress. Um, and then continue to focus on the riverfront and lakeside parks that you already enjoy and making them even more of a destination for your residents and, your, and the tourists in the area. And I could take any questions you might have. Mr. President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I studied over the document today and I noticed that through the five years, all of the projects are going to come to about $7 million, I believe. And if we would be lucky enough to uh, qualify for all those grants, uh, what would those grants total approximately? Uh, well, the grants are generally speaking, they're, you want me to answer this? Go ahead. Okay. They're generally speaking, they're a 50% uh, funding. The grants do not fund all sorts of uh, park facilities. They do fund things like trails, uh, riverfront, waterfront access, that kind of thing. They do not fund active use park facilities. Um, and that's unfortunate for Sheboygan and for all cities and, and towns and villages that are struggling to provide active use park facilities. The um, capital improvements plan that we include in the plan, uh, my um, experience and the advice I give the staff and the, par the parks committees that I work with on this kind of work is to put um, everything in the plan. And um, because if it's not in the plan, it won't happen. If it's in the plan, it might, still might not happen. But if it's not in the plan and it's not kind of a, a goal set out on the horizon, it definitely won't happen. So the seven million in capital improvements plan it, uh, could take, uh, this is a five year plan, but it might take you 10, 15, or 20 years to achieve those things. The plan gets updated every five years, but by no means have I known any community that would achieve their to everything in the plan in a five year time frame. But it's good to revisit it every five years. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So we have a motion on the floor to accept and file 2327, 2356, and 2328, and to put the resolution on 2327 upon its passage. Any further discussion? Could we, could we also add in there that you need to file the other two duplicate resolutions? Get that in there too? Can we change that? Uh, is, would you include that? Who file. second and who second? Okay. okay. Is that okay? Then uh, the other two uh, resolution duplicates will be filed. Which is filed, yep. But pass the first one. Yep. Okay, no, no uh, discussion. Please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2329 to 2342 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2343 by Alderman Manny and Gisha requesting Senator Leibholm and Representative Van Akron to craft legislation that will change the current municipality union arbitration requirements. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Perez. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, Mayor Perez, if I may, uh, I want to credit Alder Person Manny who was here this evening uh, for uh, spearheading this and I thank him for asking me to sign on. Uh, the spirit uh, of, uh, of what Alder Person Manny was trying to come about with was twofold. One was to allow communities to have wages for its employees represent the community and, uh, and the residents. Um, <coughs> with a little bit more flexibility for cities. And secondly, as the state deals with its $650 million budget deficit, 
the fear that shared services, or pardon me, shared revenue sources, the monies we get back from the state of Wisconsin proportionately will be affected, will cause an immediate impact in 08 potentially and for future years. And if the state is going to arbitrarily make those changes on us, we should also have the ability to react to those changes. They can't really have it both ways, and this allows us to help react. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2344 to 2348 lies over. 2349 to 2352 to be referred. 2353, a report of committee 6, 2353 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 6420 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity and failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. <clears throat> uh, under discussion. Uh, is Crystal Downs here tonight? She isn't here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Ms. Downs had uh, two opportunities uh, to appear before the committee. Uh, she did not, and therefore the committee uh, uh, decided not to, to deny the uh, license based on her lack of cooperation with the committee and uh, her uh, record of violations related, uh, related to the license. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I think I'd like a roll on that. Okay. Yeah. We're going to take a roll call. Yeah. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 2354 by salary and grievances to whom was referred RC number 3780708 by the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee who met and discussed the salary of the municipal judge and recommended that the salary of the judge be established at $35,000 states that the salaries and grievances makes no recommendation and wishes to have the Common Council act upon this. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I would um, move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion, second. Okay. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion. I guess um, uh, pursuant to the report of committee, I would like to bring forth the following proposal on this um, uh, particular uh, RC. And that is um, that we establish the salary for the judge of the municipal court at $20,000 to be retroactive to May 1st, 2007, and then for the two-year term, or that we also establish that salary at $20,000 for 2008. So that is a two-year term at $20,000. I believe she is receiving $18,000 right now. So for 2007, we the salary would be set at 20000 and for 2008, the salary would be set at 20000 That being said, we, this council has never really established that salary for the municipal judge. I'd like it, be it to be it further resolved that we establish the salary at $35,000 on May 1st, 2009, and $36,000 for May 1st, 2010, um, and that would coincide with the next judicial election cycle. And also that council continues to set the salary every two years and coinciding with each election cycle. Um, I think in this way, council, we have one full year ahead of us to um, measure how well the court is performing. And I think, I think we would be fiscally irresponsible if we didn't uh, monitor the court system for just one more year to make sure that it is performing as we expect it to before establishing that salary at a higher rate. I will second that motion. Motion and second. And then under further discussion, are you done? 
Thank you. President Half. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a question. I know this is a, a joint operation with the city of Kohler. Do they need to weigh in on the on the salary discussions? How is that handled? Mm -hmm. Turn, please. Uh, our contract with the village of Kohler is that the, the judge is a city employee. Thank you. And uh, Kohler agrees to share in the in the costs, including okay. the salary, uh, based on their proportion of the caseload. But they don't weigh in on. Uh, Establishing the salary, uh, although they did have, in, have input at the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee. As a committee member, but that's and as a committee member and as a recommendation to this council. Next, we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I can uh, agree with uh, the salary being uh, $35,000 for 2009, which is the next election cycle. Um, the uh, present municipal judge being elected uh, this past April. So that would, it's a, it's a two year term. Um, but I, I do not believe uh, that changing the, the salary now, especially retroactive to last May, from 18,000 to 20,000 is the proper thing to do with the, the judge being an elected official. Um, I believe she's at 18,000 and this will just change it to 20,000 and actually um, you know, I mean, you, you, people run for office knowing what they're getting into. Um, I do believe she's done an outstanding job, from my knowledge of it. Uh, she puts in a lot more hours than what the position was originally made out to be. But the judge also knew what she was getting into when she got into it. Um, and she knew what the salary was. So. Uh, I, I myself, I do agree that $35,000 in 2009, which is the next election cycle, is appropriate for that position. But I do not agree that we should do a retroactive pay raise to May of last year. Thank you. Okay. Next we have Vice President Borden. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, in uh, in, in just a brief response to what Alderman Ryan said, I think uh, uh, Attorney McLean can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the municipal court judge is one of the few positions, elected positions, where you can make an adjustment to the salary uh, as long as it's a year prior to the final year of her term. So from that standpoint, on a legal basis, I think we're, we're okay if, if we decide to do that tonight. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to support uh, Alderman Kittleson's motion uh, I would have given Judge Delahunt a raise to $35,000 in a heartbeat if I would have a piece of paper in my hand tonight on municipal court stationery saying that she was going to continue to do the summons hearings and the, uh, the writs for arrest for people that don't pay their fines. But I cannot support paying her $35,000 a year when uh, she sus summarily suspended this, although she was kind of doing it on a voluntary basis, but then right at the end of the year stopped doing the summons hearings and the writs. And that was what was creating, that procedure was creating a lot of her additional hours. And as I said, if she was continuing to do that and we had some insurance she was going to do that with an increase of salary up to $35,000 if I had it in writing, as I said, I would give her that raise in a heartbeat. But under the circumstances, I cannot support giving her a raise up to $35,000 when we have no assurance that she's going to maximize the collection procedure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President Board. Next we have Alderman Bout. Thank Sorry. you, Your Honor. I just wondered, uh, because the judge was so... Uh, so public about this whole discussion. Do we know, will, this, will she stay if we give her this extra 2000 a year? Has anyone contacted her? Because she was pretty adamant, it appeared to me in the Sheboygan Press, that she wanted 35 or she was going to take her ball and go home. So uh, I guess I, I would need to, to agree with Alderperson Bourne in that I would want some assurances. One, I don't know what she gets for an extra $2,000. I don't know why that would incent her to stay. So I kind of agree with Alderman Ryan in that why the two? Is that a gesture of, is that a minor gesture of goodwill or what? And then uh, secondly, I guess I would want to make sure before we gave her a significant increase that she was going to maximize our, our cash flow, which is what uh, th those writs do. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bolt. Bolt. We have, next we have Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I would just like to hear from somebody involved with the Municipal Court Committee or otherwise uh, the rationale for that 75, nearly 100% increase over a two-year period. I was at the, uh, I'm a member, I chair the Municipal Court Advisory Committee. Uh, a lot of the discussion that occurred was discussed in closed session, so I don't know that I can share that with you. But the, uh, in open discussion, the, the discussion centered on the fact that the council had not established a salary. And this is basically what you're doing now is establishing a salary. At whatever amount, that's, that's your job as a policymaker to establish that salary. Um, as, as, all, as Vice President Boren has stated, there, there's people who feel that, that if, if she performs uh, well on her projected revenues and if she continues to do the, the writs and summons, uh, enforcing that, that, uh, that uh, establishing the salary at a higher level would, would be appropriate. Some feel it's okay to do that. Some feel it's not okay to do that. Uh, as Alderman Ryan has stated, uh, every every uh, every candidate that runs for office knows what the salary is, and if you don't like the salary, you have the choice of not running or, or running. And once you get elected, that's what you get paid. Uh, but that's pretty much that's pretty much what happened there. Can I maybe can I ask? I guess the question in a different way. I guess either way. Either we were way off on the duties that we assigned to her when she was brought on board, or we were way off on the pay, one of the two. That, there's such a drastic correction here just a short while after she mm -hmm. came on board. Curious well, again, as, as the, uh, the, the, the job description for the judge was put together by that committee, and I don't know that any of you were part of that, uh, but my job description does not say that I need to go to public gatherings and do public uh, appearances on Saturdays and Sundays and nights and, and so forth. I do that because I, I want to do a better job at my job. It doesn't say that I need to spend 10 to 12 hours a day either. It doesn't say anything. Uh, it's just a choice that you make. Uh, your job as alderman doesn't say that uh, you need to be at every single meeting and be extremely committed. And we have one particular alderman, Alderman Kittleson, who goes above and beyond her call of duty. That's just the way it is. Some of us choose to put more time. Some of us put not to put more time. Alwyn Ryan has said it well. You know what the salary is. That's what you get. Um, so I don't know if that's answering your question, but I, I need to be careful that I don't reveal what's discussed in public session, because I mean, in, in, uh, in closed session. And that's, that's what we'll discuss. Next we have Alwyn Gisha. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Um, I've gone all over the place on this. I became aware of the situation in the last summer. I spoke many times, many times with the judge, and I attended some of the meetings of the uh, committee. And um, it's interesting. I used to, I always say to Mayor Perez, he's one of the cheapest men I know. Uh, I say that lovingly. Uh, and uh, Jim Bourne's a close second. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, both of them have interest in raising the, the salary, I believe, if I'm not stating that incorrectly, um, uh, from coming out of that committee. And there's a reason for that. And I know it's a lot of emotions with just elected, raise the salary. But I think it was established through that committee that the original salary and the estimate of hours for those salaries was just wrong. It's nobody's fault. Nobody did it maliciously. It was just wrong. And and the judge voluntarily, for the wrong money, put in probably three times as much time as, as most of us in this room for uh, not a lot of money. And if you're a lawyer making two and a quarter, 150 bucks an hour, it was a gift to the city uh, during that time. And there's a result to that gift. We all had on our desk the uh, actual numbers from 2007, roughly uh, 390000 $385,000 in net income back to the city. Now that money comes right back into the general fund. Next year's projection is $628,000. That's keeping the writ process going and the flow of backlog of receivables flowing in, bringing us in $628,000. Now I understand Alderman Bourne saying it'd be nice if we had something on our desk. That's just, that's not gonna happen. It's a separation of powers. We have a judicial branch, we have a legislative branch. Just like we're not gonna I'm not going to sit here on Jim Gisha Alderman stationery and write something like that because that's just improper to do back to her. 
It's her discretion. She has given assurances. I asked that question, I believe, three different ways at the Joint Municipal Advisory Committee. And it was answered as to my satisfaction as well as it could be answered under the separation of powers. Uh, yes, she ran on the salary. I think she, her feeling was, and let's not kid ourselves, there's been some bad feelings about how this came down. All right, uh, We all get that. But I think her thoughts were, look it, I produced. This is the highest amount of money we've ever gotten, ever, even when we were at the county. Next year it could double. We have a good person. We have a good court. I think it's run excellently. I think we have some personality differences. And the judge and I have had that discussion between she and I about our personality differences. But what it really comes down to is to have a decent attorney as our judge. And our ordinance calls for an attorney to have this. And you're going to pay him $20,000. You're not going to get the results. There are other communities not so far away from Sheboygan who aren't getting the results because they don't have an attorney and a quality person. You get what you pay for in this particular case, and the results are here. Um, even if it was $35,000, which I do support, uh, the amount per hour for a judge doing this, or for a lawyer doing this, is, is, is almost pro bono. Um, please let the emotions aside and the reality set in of if we don't have her doing the writs, we don't get the money. We don't even get what we got last year. If we go back to the number we ha you have in front of you for 07, not the 628 for 08, if we go back to that number this year, somebody's got to find $300,000 in the budget. Anybody have an idea? Not there. So is it a bad situation for us to be in? Do some people maybe feel like they're, they're, it, it's being a holdup or use another term? Uh, I can understand those feelings, but it, uh, and I've gone through those emotions myself with this. It just is the right thing to do whether we like it or not my opinion. Thank you. We do have, have uh, four lights going on. I'm going to take them in the order that they uh, appear on my screen here, so just bear with me, Alderman. We have Alderman Kittleson next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I just have to go back to when we set this court up, and, and I was there, and I see how it was structured, and, and I know what we voted upon, um, and, and people have to know that. I, I mean, this is the way we set it up. And the, and the reason we, I came to that $20,000 mark was because, I mean, I, we haven't established the salary. We need to do that. So what, that's the starting point we need to start at. Because it is 18, um, we didn't go the 18, 19, 20. I'd like to see it at the 20 mark for, this, for last year and for this year. But we did set it up this way. And I think we can give it one more year to see that it is producing and to see that it's operating in the way that we need it to um, in order to, to increase that salary to that level. That's my feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a question maybe for Attorney McLean. When are you appointed or when you have a judge, are you set up a court, there is a job description. There is, is there a job description? Was there something published somewhere? Or was this, this court has just become her, her baby. I mean, it's, it's taken on a life that she has given it. And there's really no standard that a municipal court judge should follow, about, like writs and things like that. Um, no, I, I believe there is a job description. But the, the, the judge administratively falls under the district court administrator like a circuit court judge does. Uh, and they have mandatory training and they have uh, standards that they follow. But as far as uh, some of the aspects that the judge uh, chooses to utilize for collection purposes, that's really at the discretion of the, of the court. And uh, and I am convinced that it is inappropriate for the legislative body to, to get into managing the day-to-day -day operation of the court. The, uh, where you do have the oversight is in the budget, or, and that relates to salaries, salaries of the judge, salaries of the staff, uh, numbers of staff, and things like that. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Rindfleisch and then... 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to have two concerns of what we're acting upon right now. Um, the first concern uh, echoes Alderman Ryan's. Uh, while it may be legal to do um, prior to one year towards the end of the term to do, I'm so uncomfortable doing that. I think it creates a precedent that, that may not be appropriate. All, all other elected officials must wait until the next election cycle before anything uh, is raised. Uh, so I'm, I'm concerned about that. While well, it's legal, I don't, I don't think it's a good precedent. Uh, second of all, it, it's how, it's, it probably is minorly and procedural, um, but we have a reported committee in front of us um, that is usually accepted and adopted the report, um, and the report states that there's no recommendation from salaries and grievances, but we'd like the council to act upon this. Uh, so I'm more comfortable if there was a recommendation, either for or against a particular salary that the council can act upon, and two, if the council wishes to do something that is not within salary and grievances, is to do a general ordinance establishing the salary in the first place, uh, or a uh, resolution that can be put upon its passage that we can all see. Uh, and those, unfortunately, do have to be referred, and they do take time to do, or they have to lie over. I'm not comfortable necessarily creating a policy out of thin air uh, in the council session here uh, without going through those steps of, of at least um, a, a resolution or an ordinance change on this one. Uh, so at this point, because of those comfort levels, because we don't have the black and whites. Yes, it may be procedural, and maybe we need to move forward on this quickly, um, but we don't have a recommendation to act upon, uh, and we don't have a resolution or an ordinance to act upon either. Uh, so I'm uncomfortable at this point in time in acting in that way. Uh, lastly, I do want to um, comment on perhaps the job description that the City Attorney McLean was just talking about. Um, the activity that we do as elected officials here in the legislative, in the executive under the mayor, or judicial under the municipal court is ultimately decided by the people that elect them or decide to re-elect them. Uh, and if they choose not to perhaps maximize the, their, the tools that they have for the city's benefit, that's something that then those that elect them can take up with them. So I, I am uncomfortable necessarily creating a job description for an elected official that's not within our own branch of government that we have here in front of us. Uh, as well. So for those reasons, I, I am going to vote no at this point in time. Not any indication of do I think that the judge is doing a great job or not. Do I agree with the salary being set or not. Um, but really, I think all those, those, that debate should be secondary to the fact that we think we need to do it properly, uh, have someone write an ordinance or resolution that we can act upon, or have salary grievances whose, whose committee it really comes out of, uh, have a recommendation one way or the other that we can either go with or go against. Thank you. Next we have President Hahn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple questions. Is there an alternative way that we can continue with the writ process without the judge doing that? That's my first question. My second question, does the original job description require that the candidate have a law degree? I just need clarification on that. A law degree? Law. And uh, a license. It's not in the job description, and frankly, I'm not sure if there is a job description for the judge, but it is in the ordinance okay, that thank uh, you. required to be a practicing attorney. Great, staff. thank you. And as far as uh, the writ process, you need the judge to issue the writs. It's, okay. uh, it's a judicial uh, decree, in effect. Thank you. Next we have Owen Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree that the judge knew what the salary was when she ran for this office. And I want to make it clear, I believe, that she asked for $42,000. The Joint Municipal um, Court Committee decided to give her $35,000. And af after that, I believe, she contacted Alderman Bourne and said she would no longer do the writs. I find that very disturbing. Um, I feel like we are being held hostage to give her a salary that she wants. And as Alderman Bourne explained, there is no guarantee, even if we do give her the 35000 that she will continue to write these writs. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, listening to some of the aldermen speak, those who are very close to the issue, it sounds like the writs are almost a necessity to make that court viable. And the, the viability of the court has been called into question almost from the day of its inception. I guess so my question would be is can we make it I'll ask the, the question to the city attorney McLean. Can we make it part of the job description? Would it be illegal or improper by this body to make it a part of the job description, seeing that it's such an important part of the job? Yes, I, I believe it would be inappropriate 
and really it's a separation of powers issue. I don't think the legislative body can dictate what the judicial branch, how they function in their the exercise of their discretion. Is there a matter of illegality, I guess, is a question related to that? Yes, it's really constitutional separation of powers. Couldn't they, but this legislative body is established policy we got a separation of power between legislative and executive. They established policy. I have to follow it. Would the same logic apply there? I, I believe that, no, I don't think you can dictate to the judge whether he's going to exercise their discretion in a certain manner and issue a writ. Um, I think you can set her salary, uh, tell her where the uh, court is going to be, and uh, she's the judge and she's going to run the court. And to the extent that the electorate is dissatisfied with uh, what uh, the judge is doing, uh, you have an election cycle every two years. Okay. We have two more lights. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to go back to the original document that was put together when we put this court together, and it says, while state law provides that a municipal court judge need not be an attorney, the committee did strongly recommend that the city require that the judge be an attorney, just to clarify that. And also, uh, uh, Attorney McLean, can you speak to Alderman Reinfleisch's uh, questions on whether this is legal to do? Are we doing anything that is out of order? Thank you. Attorney McLean. I guess I would advise, and I agree with Alderman Rinfleisch, you don't really have a document before you. And the action of this body, what I would recommend if you do anything, would be to uh, act to draft a document or an ordinance from the floor that then would be uh, laid over to the next meeting for, for action. Uh, if you don't have uh, an ordinance in it, I think the salary should be established by ordinance. Uh, you don't have one before you, so you really can't act on uh, any uh, ordinance in front of you. Follow up, Alderman Kisler? No. Thank you. Yes. Then, then is it the the proper thing to do? Is is to refer, the proper thing refer back to to establish that ordinance or to establish this what, to salary and grievance? Is that what we need to do? Uh, I guess or from the floor? How? From the, from the floor, uh, salary and grievance is telling you that they don't want to deal with it. That <laughs> they want the council to decide. To decide. Okay. Thank you. So the the alternative, the, the, your, your option may be, Alderman Kilson, that your motion that's on the floor now may, may probably should be withdrawn and that you draft an ordinance authored by you and whoever other aldermen wish to do so, introduce it to the council as a document. That document can either be referred to salary and grievance, which it probably shouldn't because they don't want to deal with it, or it can rules can be suspended and acted upon the next uh, council meeting. Okay? So would you like to withdraw your motion? Yes, I would like to withdraw. And the second would like to be withdrawn, but the motion to file still is in place? Yes. Okay, Alderman Barron. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple things I want to comment on. As far as the history of this whole matter, I got a call on December 26th, the day after Christmas, at 8.05 a.m. from the judge saying that she was going to summarily quit doing the summons hearings and the writs of commitment. Uh, I don't know why she called me. I'm not on the, uh, I'm not on the Municipal Court Committee. I go to some of the meetings. Uh, but I, I guess I'm on the Finance Committee, maybe that's why she called me. I then called the mayor and informed him of her decision, and then this is what it, what, what's transpired since December 26th. Uh, that's, that's where we are now. Uh, also, uh, in reference to what Alderman Gisher said, and with all due respect, I certainly don't get the feeling uh, from seeing the, uh, the judge since that meeting of uh, of the uh, municipal court committee, that there's any. I have I have not gotten the sense that she, if she gets this raise of 30, 30, up to thirty five thousand dollars, that she's going to continue to do uh, 
the summons hearings and the writs. And we cannot tie a salary increase to telling her what to do because it's her own domain. However, as a goodwill gesture, that's why I would like to see something from her in writing on municipal court stationery as a goodwill gesture saying that if I get a raise, then I'm going to continue with that process to maximize collections. But I certainly haven't gotten that uh, from her at all that she's going to continue with the process or she gets the raise. Thank you. So we have one more light. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, Alderman Gish's words were very persuasive, um, and, and he has won me over from an idea perspective, but I, I would like to see this document, uh, and I agree that uh, Alderperson Kittleson has put together what is probably the right plan. I would like to urge her to, or this body to refer it back to the Salary and Grievances Committee, though, because I think it's just uh, we convene that body so that they can offer us an opinion on salary and grievances, and if they only had a body of four that night, so be it. I, I would urge that they form as a body of five and return an opinion to us so we can vote upon it. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, salary and grievances does not seem to be very interested in this, um, and I, I, I propose that we draft an ordinance from the floor uh, keeping the salary at $18,000 until um, May 1st of 2009. Now, this is after the next election that we increase it to $35,000 on May 1st of 2009. Um, if our present municipal court judge decides that that would be appropriate in 2009, um, she will probably run for that office again at that $35,000 salary. Uh, if she decides that uh, she does not want to do that, obviously we'll be looking for another municipal court judge uh, in the interim between now and then, and uh, regardless, uh, that will be in a, an electable uh, position in 2000, April of 2009. Um, I believe that we cannot dictate to, to make the judge put in writing that she will do the writs. However, if you are running for a political office and somebody is running against you, you may say that if I am reelected to this position, I will also do the writs. Um, along with my other responsibilities as municipal court judge. So I would like to put that forth at this time. Yep. More lights popped up. Now, I'm letting this go a little bit beyond the two per alderman because I think this is important enough, but this is a great example of why the council in his own wisdom decided every shot, get, every person gets two shots at it. Uh, alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. All of the words that were spoken here tonight pretty much were spoken at salary and grievance, and we were at loggerheads, and it was two to two. And with that sort of a, a, a makeup, the motion fails. It failed because it was two for, two against, so the motion failed. That's why we're asking the council to also hear all this information, take an action. And I think it would be wonderful if we could have five at salary and grievance from now on but I know I'm going to be gone this month for one time, and Alderman Gish is going to be the chair. Alderman Verhasselt may be gone with his work. Someone may also be gone. So um, the odds of having five are not all that good. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Verhasselt. Thank you, Ron. I just wanted to, I guess, beg to differ with Alderman Ryan. I don't think the fact that it, it was locked in a 2-2 tie should indicate any disinterest by the committee. I think this committee would love to weigh in on it. And had I not been stuck in an East Coast snowstorm, we would have a decision that this council is so, so sorely looking for this evening. So I'd welcome it to come back. As a member of Salary and Grievance, I would welcome it to come back to us. Special meeting. Alderman Gisha, you're next. Thank you. Uh, despite Alderman Ryan's actually setting up a campaign for judge in how they should run their campaign <laughs> next year, um, it, if it's worth 35000 come June 1st, 2009, why isn't it worth $35,000 now? We have the performance. We have more than we asked the judge to do, and she did it on her own and on her own time. If it's worth it then, why isn't it worth it now to keep a good person who has a good track record? It doesn't make any sense. You get a new judge, the new judge could decide not to do the writs. According to Attorney McLean, as he's nodding his head, they can do whatever they want. 
We have one who wants to do the writs, won't put it in writing, because I understand the separation of powers situation as explained by uh, Attorney McLean. But she, she's proven she would do it. I'll guarantee if we keep it at 20 or 18 or do whatever you want, you won't get it at all. And uh, that's abundantly clear. So if it's worth it then, it's worth it now, you have a known commodity. Alden Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Last comment. And, I, and again, it doesn't feel good. The way this is borne out has not been a fun process. But Alderman Gisha, I think, uh, at his core is exactly right. Fundamentally, either we want the $600,000 a year that we believe she can generate. And the Finance Committee has seen those numbers. And, and uh, in the judge's defense, when she sat before our body and talked about the next couple of years and the, and the, the cash that might come from that, she was pretty committed to running, uh, running her court in a way that uh, delivered justice and uh, and supported itself. So again, my inclination for this body is that uh, if we lose the judge, if we lose this reputable person who's an attorney and, 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 and can, is committed to the performance that was communicated to finance, if we lose that person, that's a lot of money that the people of this body will have to find to make up in other ways. So again, I would urge the committee to find a way to support uh, Alderman Kittleson's, uh, Alderperson Kittleson's plan. Thank you. And we have Alderman Clavenus. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I agree. I, it's seventeen thousand dollars, seventeen thousand dollars difference between eighteen thousand and thirty-five, and for what we get for seventeen thousand uh, dollars, the judge spoke to me in regard to the fact that she is an attorney. She has put her practice aside, her private practice aside, in order to do this. But she can't afford to keep putting her private practice aside for eighteen thousand dollars, because it has become something that's much bigger and has become much more involved. Uh, we wouldn't bat an eye to give $17,000 to get our overtime for streets plowed, things like that. You know, that kind of money comes out real fast. But when we uh, want to, um, I think, enhance the respect for the city, and I have talked to people in building inspection who say that the municipal court has done wonders for their department. This is not just a money thing. It's also the idea that the city has some teeth in its ordinances and its rules and regulations and she brings these people up to court and she gives them sentences when they don't follow you know, city rules and ordinances. And before those things would, would sit for uh, hour, uh, months and months in uh, county court, in, in uh, circuit court, because there was such a big backlog of other criminal cases. So now the city can get its work done in terms of enforcing its, you know, its ordinances through its own vehicle. And if we're going to stop that, then we're just saying this municipal court is kind of a play thing, and you know we're not serious about it. Okay. Alderman Wagaman, you were one of the originators and proponents. Any light to shed on the issue? Uh, when uh, I guess the proposal was originally mine, and we began working on it, we send out surveys to 35 different communities. Uh, the city attorney's office. Uh, drew up a survey, and uh, we got information back from many, many cities. And everywhere we looked, it was a positive sort of a thing. And one of the problems, just as was uh, just stated, for instance, when I was on the police department, we'd write snowbird and say tickets, bushels of them, just as they, they've done now. The, the courts would, Circuit Court would push these tickets back and push these tickets back, and pretty soon we were into August. And it's pretty hard to get people excited about snowbird and season in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, the city uh, housing inspectors and city plumbing inspectors uh, hesitated to write citations because they just never, ever seemed to come up. And so we needed some way to fix this. Uh, one of the things we learned was that the state had adopted a uh, regulation, and maybe the city attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, that if cities need a collection process, they can actually go to a collection agency. And some cities do that. They turn all their uh, past two things over to a collection agency, of course, takes a, a portion of it. And, uh, but we worked very hard on it. We had several citizens on the committee, and most of them felt it was a bad idea when we started. By the time we got done, they all thought it was a, a terrific idea. We had convinced all of them. So I think the municipal court is something that we need. We had a municipal court for over 100 years, and then the municipal court was uh, 
I guess there was something wrong with the way the courts were set up and they, the cities had to readopt their whole court system and Sheboygan chose not to. And we were the losers in the long run. I think if you looked around the state, you found out that we were one of the few cities that did not have a municipal court system and I think it works very well. And uh, I think we need to keep it working well. And really, if you look at the salary an attorney generally can make on the outside, what, what she's getting paid is, you know, just a mere token of, uh, so she's, she's, it's probably costing her money to do this. And I, I think it's important that we keep this municipal court system going. And to say that we have the municipal court system just to make money, I think it is, is a wrong way to really look at it. What we need is uh, a municipal court system to handle uh, municipal ordinance violations. Because if you go over to the circuit court and they've got a hundred municipal court violations and 15 criminal cases, maybe for armed robbery or whatever, you can imagine which ones are going to get preference. So uh, it, it's a system that we, uh, I think extremely important to uh, uh, keep going. Thank you. Okay, so the motion has been withdrawn. There's a motion to file. Everybody understand that? We will, do you need to call the roll on this um, one? Who made the motion to file this? Was Alderman it Alderman Kittleson. Kittleson and second by Alderman Meyer? Mm -hmm. Vice President Bourne. Uh, just a point of clarification, Your Honor. Uh, if we file this, then what's the next step? It's gonna go back to salary and grievance or we haven't decided that yet? What uh, the next step, as I understand it, is that Alderman Kittleson is going to draft uh, a resolution that will establish the salary and that will be referred to salary and grievances for discussion. Okay. You'll, you'll get help on, on kills. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Okay. We'll just call it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good discussion. 2355 by law and licensing recommends granting taxi cab businesses license Business license number 2525, All-Star Taxi, one with the following conditions. Uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Mr. Raza, the new agent, appeared before our committee last Tuesday night, and the two conditions there is he has to clear up some clerical things with the assistant of city attorney. Uh, regarding a couple of his taxi cabs to make sure he's got the right permits and stickers on those cabs. And the second thing is uh, that Daniel Castro, the former owner of All Star Taxi, uh, surrender his taxi cab driver's license and also his business, taxi cab driver's business license. Uh, he had 30 days to do that and he didn't comply. So we tagged this on as a requirement for the new license to be granted. Thank you. Any other discussion? Being none, please call roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2357, and 2358. Lies over. Matters laid over 11, 2257, and RO number, RO number 5030708 by the city clerk submitting the 2000 annual report of the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that the RO be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2235 has been acted on. 2236, resolution number 2221-0708 by Alderman, Alder, Alderman Hanna, Clayunas, and Gisha authorized a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriations for non-represented employees, one-time bonus increases. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Boren? No. 
Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2237, resolution number 2220708 by all the persons Hannah, Bourne, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha authorizing entering into contract with Lakeshore Lead Consulting and Cardinal Environmental to perform lead risk assessments for the 2007 Lead Hazard Reduction Grant. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? For Hasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2238, resolution number 2230708 by all the persons Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for donations received for Police Department Junior Police Academy. President Hannah. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2251, General Ordinance Number 870708, by all the persons Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Verhassel, amending the municipal code so as to include a change of, to pay schedule X, extra help, class 23. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer. Montemayor. Aye. <laughs> Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clionis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2252, General Ordinance Number 880708, by Alderman Montemayor. Meyer, Gisha, and Heidemann reestablishing the salary for the position of Alder Person of the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, like to uh, make an amendment or a motion uh, that in 2010, the salary for alderman position uh, uh, be risen to $6,000 per year, and then annual increases of 2.5% thereafter. Uh, after consulting with uh, City Attorney McLean, uh, this proposal would not affect any alder person who currently serves on the council. For example, if I decide to run again in two years, uh, in, and I'm elected in 2010, then I would be able to take advantage of the new salary. But for the, for the rest of 2008 and the rest of 2009, it would stay at $4,668. Also, the people that are running in uh, 2009, next year, those eight older persons who are running in 2009 also would not benefit uh, unless they were re-elected in 2009 because it would not be going into effect in 2010. So I'm going to make that motion to adjust the aldermanic salary starting in 2010. Is, that, is your amend in the, the ordinance there? Is, it, is that your motion to amend? Right. Mo motion and second to amend. Okay. All the amendment only under discussion. We have Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually uh, uh, pushed my button before the amendment. However, I would like to discuss it. Um, to me, uh, to give ourselves a raise as, as aldermen uh, with our present budget situation, I don't think is, is, is proper. Um, I understand 46.68 is our present salary. 
Uh, to me, this is, uh, this is public service. Um, this isn't a part-time job. So uh, I do not agree with the amendment. I believe our salary should be held as it presently is. Thank you. Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Alderman Manny, who was, can't be here this evening, had asked me to put this on hold for discussion for him in two weeks. Um, I know it might be out of order, but I think there's some more discussion that wants to be had on this issue. So um, I'm just voicing his request at this point. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Let me repeat the motion. Sure. Uh, you're voting, and I vote would be to amend this document for 2010 to go to $6,000 a year, and then after that, an annual 2.5% increase. So an I vote would do that. Montemayor? Aye. Rin Fleisch? No. I'm sorry? No. Thank you. Ryan? No. Smith? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? No. Gisha? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. Five eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. And I need a motion to file 2252 if you're not going to act on it. Yeah. Do it. You have to act oh, on it. Oh, passed. Motion to... Motion. Yeah, there already is a motion. Hold on, hold on. A motion to put the resolution upon its passage? Ordinance upon its passage, yep. Is there somebody who'd like to make a motion to put the resolution as upon its passage as is, which will keep the salary as is? I did. Yep. Oh, you did already. Okay. And yep. there was a second? Alderman Bell. Under discussion on that motion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you. I really hesitated on the last amendment. Only because I know there's a lot of people in this room who are put in just a ton of time. And the amount of money isn't very much. What was it nine bucks a day? And I do agree that it is public service. Um, however, you want to make sure that other people over the years are encouraged to come into this body. But, uh, but because of the budget considerations we have, um, I, uh, I will vote to keep our salaries exactly where they are. Well, you started something again. All the lights went on. <laughs> <laughs> All in clear does. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think, you know, all noble people that we are and whatever, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a reimbursement, basically a reimbursement on expenses, gas, paper, uh, time. And it's, not, it's not salary at all. It's a reimbursement on expenses. And can't, you, can, I, you can't kid me that anything, everything else isn't getting cheaper. And uh, I just feel like you know, this could be like the, the, the landed gentry who uh, could serve. They were the only people who could serve in public office because they were the ones who only could afford it. You know what I'm saying? In other words, the, the, the number could get so small in terms of what people see it to be that, well, why should I even bother? Because it's, it's saying that you have to, you know, you're not going to live on this. You know, you're not going to live on this stipend. Uh, but it's also saying something like, well, you better have some other means because only people with means could be doing this um, and, and supporting themselves. So I, I just take that as a, a point of view for you to consider. And I would just like to, to say that I understand why a lot of aldermen are reluctant uh, to vote on an increase in their salary. Uh, I've talked to other aldermen in other communities, uh, but as has been said, this is an elected position. You know what you're going to get when you when you run for office, um, which is what I think some of the aldermen were trying to tell you with the judge. It's the same thing. Um, I, I caution you to to be very observant of your logic as you apply it on one instance and not the other. Um, it makes people very uncomfortable. Uh, for all that matter, you are not required, and I'll, I'll, Alderman Kittleson, I hope you don't mind me saying that, Alderman Kittleson is not required to be, I could literally say just about every meeting, but she is. 
She is, and she's a good alderman. She dedicates herself, she takes notes, she makes, she provides input, she does it because she's a public servant. Every elected official is a public servant. And for one rationale to be used to apply to one and not the other disturbs me somewhat, particularly because of the discrepancy in participation and involvement amongst all of us. Some aldermen have only one committee. Some aldermen have a few committees. Some aldermen, like President Hanna, has a lot of committees. 17. 17. <laughs> Some aldermen, who's counting? Yeah, who's counting? Some aldermen go to meetings. Sometimes aldermen don't go to meetings. Some aldermen get more calls from constituents than others. That's what it demands of you. Some aldermen make barely enough to pay their gas, their computer, their paper, their ink. All of you, every time you're here or at a committee mem a meeting, you're away from your family. You're away from your friends. You're away from doing what, what you normally would have done. It's not a livelihood. Neither is the judge's position a livelihood. Her, li her livelihood is a lawyer. So the rationale is somewhat disturbing here. And, and I would ask that, that you weigh it carefully when this issue comes up again. Because I know that the first thing that comes up when anybody tries to run for all of them is that he, he or she gave himself or herself a raise. That's not true. Quite frankly, I think you deserve more. And I'll be beating the public for this. But I think the aldermen do one heck of a job and for what you get paid, and, and it, may be, it may be construed as a reimbursement for what you do, but I think it should be a little bit more because I think all of you put a lot of heart, a lot of guts, a lot of thought into what you do. And quite frankly, that's what's made this community better and better. And I thank you for that. All of them, you're next. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I sort of wanted to agree with all sorts of things around here, but I do want the public to realize that the salary we get, we get is not added to for gasoline or telephone or meetings that we attend or computer or anything. It's, that's a salary, period, and nothing else is added. Thank you. Vice President Boren. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. The reason I brought this forward uh, is because it doesn't affect anybody that's up here right now unless we run for election again and are reelected. That's the only way we're going we're gonna to collect this additional salary. And I thought by doing this in 2010 would take some of the politics out of this because it doesn't affect us. I've got to, I'm going to, if I get reelected on April 1st, it's going to be 4668 for the rest of 2008, and it's going to be that way for 2009. And I brought this forward mainly for the people that follow us on the council. By the time 2010 rolls around, half of us may not even be here. We, we may have some, some new faces. And also, by 2010, all of these costs that everybody talks about are going to continue to go up. They're not going to go down. What are we going to have, 450 gasoline by then? Whatever, whatever the case may be. So bringing this forward by no means was to put any money in my pocket. Who knows if I'll run again in 2010 but I think it, stays, it sets the stage, at least for those older persons in 2010, to get some kind of a wage that reflects the amount of effort that they're putting into this job. And I would invite any critics of the aldermanic pay to job shadow, job shadow Alderman uh, Kittleson for a week, Alderman Hanna, and not patting myself on the back. I think I'm on seven or eight committees. I'd invite you to job shadow us for a week or two and see how much time is actually put into this job. Thank you. Thank you. Having said all that, and that probably should have been discussed in that manner while the amendment was in place, does anybody want, wish to re reconsider? No one? OK. The motion is to put it upon his passage. Please call the roll. Ren Fleisch. Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Ryan. Aye. Smith? Aye. For Hasselt? No. Longaman? Aye. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. I'm sorry, back to Hannah. Did you say aye? Aye. Thank you. Heidemann? Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? No. Meyer? No. And Montemayor? No. Nine ayes, five noes. Motion carries. 2253, General Ordinance Number 890708 by all the persons Vanderweel, Rinsfleisch, Ryan, Smith, and Kittleson. 
relating to no parking regulations to remove the existing two-hour parking 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. except Sunday and holiday zone along the east side of North 7th Street from the south curb line of North Avenue, south 250 feet thereof. Alderman Rinkfleisch. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Please continue. Thank you. Uh, this is actually done at, by request of uh, Memorial Hospital in that neighborhood there. Uh, it is by the request that we're uh, allowing additional parking throughout the day. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call roll. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunis. Meyer. Montemayor. Aye. And Rinfleisch. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2254 General Ordinance Number 980708 by all the persons Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Smith, and Kittleson relating to no parking regulations to add a no parking here to corner zone along the east side of North 7th Street from the south curb line of North Avenue, south 80 feet thereof. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This actually goes hand in hand with uh, creating um, uh, parking all day along the side of the street. It's a very small section between the exit, uh, the north exits to Memorial Hospital and the curb on North Avenue. There's room for basically one spot and it's been a problem in winter uh, for parking so we're removing that parking spot, that one spot and creating full day parking south of that driveway. Uh, so it's not necessarily by their request to remove this one spot but we're doing so just to, uh, for public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Smith? Verhasselt, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, and Ryan. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2255, General Ordinance Number 910708, by all the persons Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Smith, and Kittleson, relating to parking regulations to remove a two-hour parking 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. zone along the south side of Union Avenue from the west side of South 22nd Street, extended 470 feet west thereof. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, uh, move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Uh, once again, this is uh, also done by the request of Fresh Brands, whose property it is adjoining to. Uh, they used to have a credit union there and required people to have two-hour parking only so that their that member employees could get in and out of there. The credit union no longer is in that building, so uh, they're looking for all day parking alongside the street, across the street from um, Veterans Park. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. For Hassel, Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. and Smith. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, we're going to do other matters, and then when we're done with that, I want to just mention something to the council, so please don't, don't run off on me or make motions yet to uh, adjourn. Attorney McLean, other matters? Thank you, Your Honor. 2359 is communication from Chad Wilson of the FDL Cyclory Cycling Team requesting permission to use Evergreen Park to host an annual USA Cycling event. That will be referred to Public Works. 2360 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Donald Keller of Sheboygan Memorial Post number 9156 requesting permission to hold their annual Buddy Poppy Drive in May 2008. Can you say it again? Annual what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that lies over, the Buddy Puppy. 2361 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Charter Cable Partners LLC notifying the city that they have submitted an application to the state of Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions for a state-issued franchise in which to continue their relationship with the city of Florida. That will be referred to the Cable Refranchise Committee. Alman Gisha. Your Honor, could I also ask that be referred to finance? And finance. Make that notation. Thank you. Continue. Turn 2362 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from Adam Payne, County Board Administrator, requesting permission to utilize the City Day at Blue Harbor Conference Center 
on Tuesday, April 15th, for the purpose of a reception honoring three long-serving county board supervisors who are retiring, as well as welcoming newly elected county board supervisors. That goes to finance. 2363 is enrolled by the city clerk submitting a petition submitted by William Chevrolet to vacate County Trump Highway PP and the support of County Trump PP and LK from Washington Avenue South to South Business Drive. That goes to city plan. 2364 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Kathleen Hill for alleged damages to the mirror of her van when a snowplow hit the mirror and knocked it off the road. That goes to risk management. 2365 is a claim from Daniel Johnson Jr. for alleged damages to his motorcycle when a garbage truck didn't pull out far enough to make it around his motorcycle without hitting it. That will be referred also to risk management. 2366 is submitting a claim from Renee and George Miller for alleged damages to their rental vehicle when a snowplow hit the park rental wheel. That will also go to risk management. 2367 is a resolution granting BFW Wolf Olson Post 1230, Auxiliary 1230, and BFW Memorial Post 9156, Auxiliary 9156, permission to hold the annual Poppy Drive on May 16th, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and May 17th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in 2008. That one will lie over. 2368 is a resolution endorsing the fundraising program for park improvements called the Wildwood Rally as presented and sponsored by the Sheboygan Athletic Club, which may include naming rights sponsorship for various items in the Wildwood Park. That will be referred to Finance and Public Works. 2369 is a committee report by the Naming Rights Committee, uh, to whom was referred Resolution 227-0708 by all the persons Bob, Hannah, and Gisha to name the city of Sheboygan's Blue Harbor Conference Center the Michael Muth Convention Center at Blue Harbor recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. That one lies over. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, I spoke with uh, uh, Director Bittner this evening. Uh, there's been some more information that's come to light, and he'd like to have this referred back to the Naming Rights Committee so they can discuss some other information to do with the uh, the amended resolution, not the or original resolution. Okay, instead of lying over, it, goes, it will be referred to a Naming Rights. Make that notation, 2369, Naming Rights. Committee, let's continue. 2370 is an ordinance vacating a portion of County Trump PP and County Trump OK and a portion of South Drive. That one will go to City Plan. 2371 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That one goes to Law and Licensing. 2372 is an ordinance amending Section 29-75 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code, so as to change the job code and the job description for the purchasing agent, the finance department's table of organization. That will be ref that would lie over. 2373 is an ordinance amending section 29-75 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code, so as to change the job code and the job description for the finance director treasurer and the finance department's table of organization. And that one lies over. Before I ask for a motion to adjourn, I just wanted to um, let the council know that good news and bad news. A woman, Bonnie Smith, is uh, going to resign two weeks before her term is up, which is bad news. Good news is she found a house to buy and outside the district, so she has to do that. And we wanted to, uh, I wanted to personally thank you for your service in the Common Council. Um, you were truly a good asset to the council, and you provided great input and insight and uh, demonstrated a lot of commitment to the council. So thank you very much. Thank you. And we wish you the best in your future endeavors. I need a motion to... No, please. Motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Oh, I gotta change my Stand adjourned.